global economy is is the big topic that's what we all care about most but financial markets can come up with their own narratives and go their own way at least for a while so you have to they're not in in sync they they do they will be in sync eventually but uh, not always right away a lot of times the financial markets get ahead of themselves and then they wake up to reality and they oh crash you know, correct down so there's a little bit of that going on but in terms of the global economy um i think your use of the word global is very much on point because we are going into or may already be in a global recession now that's rare it's it's rare when hey, china japan us germany they're all in recession at the same time but that's what's unfolding that's a big deal uh, well for obvious reasons uh because uh, you know it affects uh, basically everyone but um there's no life preserver there's no you know it's not like china's going to pull us all out of it with cheap exports or or japan's going to you know put the pedal to the metal in terms of fixed uh asset investment uh you know etc so so that's a really bad sign i mean and just to be very specific you know we just saw us fourth quarter gdp grew at a 2.9% annualized rate people are like yeah it's pretty good um and you know it's not good by post 1980 standards it's not good at all by post world war 2 standards but post 2008 yeah that's not that's not bad uh, again you have to disaggregate it and you look at what grew it was uh, inventories were a big contributor uh and net exports were a big contributor um and a fi- fixed asset investment in particular there was a big load of um uh, aircraft orders for Boeing which is notoriously lumpy you know they they'll have a big month blowout month and then nothing for a couple of months not nothing but you know something very low so when you look at that uh inventories are counted as part of gdp of course but it's not necessarily a good thing if inventories are piling up it means retailers are not buying and this kind of goes back to the whole supply chain breakdown of a year ago that's what my book sold out was about so you go back to uh let's say the spring of 2022 the supply chain had completely fallen apart and if you were a purchasing manager and you were you were saying to yourself um okay we're kind of coming out of covid we're we're, we're going to start growing uh but the supply chain is broken so instead of ordering one you know container i'm going to order three containers because maybe one will get through you know through the bottleneck so i only want one but i'm going to order three and hope for the best what happened was some of that a lot of the stuff was alleviated not for good reasons not really for logistical reasons but because the consumers slowed down a lot beginning in june partly in reaction to the fed starting to hike rates in march of uh, 2022 uh and then here come the three containers so at this at the at the exact moment when uh, demand destruction is kicking in your inventory is going to the rafters so what do retailers do or wholesalers for that matter but retail they slash prices that you know two for one sales uh you know because inventories are a nightmare for retailers for obvious reasons but one you have to finance them so they eat up working capital you could be cash but now you know you got a bunch of stuff in the back office and number two it just takes up space i mean it, it insurance costs and, and other costs like that but the other thing people kind of underestimate is that like st- uh, fashion goes stuff goes out of fashion you know ne- last spring's styles are not next spring styles you still got last spring stuff good luck you know it's it, we're getting close to spring so you're dumping that stuff um you know consumer electronics uh, uh, you know you got an iPhone 13 well everybody wants an iPhone 14 you know whatever i mean you take the point so um so piling up inventories is a very unhealthy sign it means the retail sector is drying up demand destruction is kicking in costs are going up because you got to finance all this stuff and your profit margins are going down so i don't take a lot of comfort from that but the other thing to the extent you can disaggregate monthly data and there's a lot of monthly data yeah 2.9% annualized for the quarter but it really slowed down in december christmas was a disaster i mean yeah people bought stuff for christmas but way below expectations and again it goes back to piling up the inventory at the worst possible time so it looks like the us is going into 2023 possibly recession started in december if not we expect it to start soon but you're seeing the same thing in europe now europe got a break with the weather uh you know obviously there's a war going on so that's a big factor but um uh, you know and natural gas prices uh, skyrocketed and, uh, and and oil prices skyrocketed um again in mid uh 2022 they've come down but it doesn't mean that you know all is well or or they're out of the woods and there are there are other things going on china is a basket case um you know they went from zero covid it was bad public policy and bad health policy but they did it anyway so they flipped almost on a dime so they just turned on a dime and said okay let it rip the, the positive letter okay let everyone get infected and we'll do the best we can one of the ways you get through it is by letting ripping it develop what's called herd immunity and that's what worked in north america and europe 
But the other difference with, between China and Europe and, and the U.S. is that they don't have the healthcare system to deal with it. Our healthcare system, which is pretty good, was strained. Same thing in Europe. China has nowhere near the ICU unit, the ICU units, the oxygen, the treatments, uh, the just the, the professionals, the nurses and doctors. Not even close. And when you get out to the village level, which is where most of the people still live, believe it or not, um, they uh, they often have nothing. But that is hurting the economy as much as the zero COVID. They're, they're, they had no good ways out. I'm not saying one's better than the other. They're both awful. But uh, but you still have a lot of things that are not COVID. The real estate collapse, the excessive debt, the demographic decline, um, just the impact of top-down management where you can't possibly get everything right. You know, and so and decoupling from the U.S. and the U.S. cutting off um, you know high tech exports to China, including their country exports where they're relying on U.S. licenses or equipment. So China's in a deep hole, probably in a recession. Japan, same thing. So so the global economy is in bad shape. Uh, it's going into a recession. Now, a lot of people have said that, um, yeah, 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 we're going to have a recession as if it's no big deal. But they're expecting a mild recession. I see a much more severe recession now, the other half, what does this mean for financial markets? And there, um, the best way I've been able to explain it, imagine you're in a, an, an Irish pub and you got three Irish storytellers. And I'm part Irish, so I can talk about the Irish, you know, and, and, uh, um, but they're telling three different stories and you got to listen to each one. So there's the Fed story, the market story, and then there's something called reality, what's actually happening. Uh, so stock market's telling us Goldilocks, bond market's telling us, you know, here comes, uh, you know, Hurricane Mitch or whatever. And then, uh, there's what I call the reality. Uh, and I guess I'm a storyteller here, but, um, what I see is, is a kind of a hybrid. The Fed's doing what they're doing, right or wrong. Okay. They're, they're doing what they're doing. The market has their own interpretation. I agree with the market, certainly the bond market, that the Fed has probably over tightened. They probably are at the, um, so-called terminal rate. They just don't know it. They're going to keep going for the reasons I explained. That means they're going to make it worse. They're going to make the recession even worse. Um, and they may pivot uh, to say that there could be a rate cut. Um, it won't be in April, but, you know, rate cut in August. Maybe I wouldn't rule that out. But for a really bad reason. In other words, if the Fed cuts rates, which they may, the pivot may be real. It's not because they engineered a soft landing and Goldilocks and everything. Oh, it's just right. It's because they screwed up as usual as they've been doing since 1913. They over tightened and they found out too late. And then they got to, then they have to slam on the brakes if, or take the foot off the brake, if you will, in terms of rate hikes and then pivot. And we've seen this movie before. This is exactly what happened in 2018. The stock market dropped 20%. I mean, it was like 19.9 or something on the Dow. So maybe not technically a bear market, but yeah, what's the difference? It dropped 20%. The Fed was tightening into that collapse. The Fed tightened. On uh, December 16th, 2018, only like eight days before the Christmas Eve massacre and after most of the 20% collapse had already happened, they tightened one last time. So what it shows you is that when the Fed's on a mission, they...